Hey everyone, welcome to the workshop. Now today we're going to be making my Jedi Temple Guard costume. Uh, I say that, I've already made a lot of it. Behind me you can see the mask which I did in a previous video. You can go check that out here. Um, but today we're focusing on the rest of the costume, all the armor pieces, so let's go. So as it stands, I'm actually about two weeks away from MTM Comic Con in London, uh, less than two weeks now. Um, so I've really got to get cracking and finish all the rest of the pieces. Now I have been working on a lot of them and a lot of them are in a near to finish state. So I'm going to bring you guys up to speed right now. So here we have some of the armor pieces that are most of the way there so far. There's the helmet which we worked on previously looking fantastic. And here is the armor and shoulders. So these armor pieces are 3D printed. They were 3D printed by my friend Jai over at Geek and Cosplay. You can check him out over on Instagram. Um, but these were printed on his big printers over there. And then he gave them to me and I did all the finishing work. So the helmet was originally a cast which came from Props Foundry. Um, it's a fantastic sculpt. They did all this sculptural detail to bring out uh, the mask in 3D. This was before we saw the mask over on the Andor TV show. So it's just a bit of a different interpretation of the mask into real life. But Props Around the Ultra did 3D files. I used their files and some other files that I found to, to do this. This chest piece and all this was sculpted to match the helmet that I had so you can see I've carried the details from all of all this down onto all this sculpting it all in same with the shoulder pieces so yeah so the shoulder pieces also have a version of the logo from the Jedi temple so they have that sculpted on there I did all that by hand as well these are all painted and then this finish is actually gold leaf uh, well it's faux gold leaf uh, as you can see, uh, some of the gold leaf sometimes starts to age. I don't mind that, it's kind of cool. Um, you have to seal your gold leaf um, quite quickly or it starts to oxidize the bits of copper and whatever in it starts to oxidize and you get these kind of things. So you have to seal it quite quick. But yeah, I have the helmet and the two shoulders all done and fitted. These are attached with adjustable straps up here. These aren't the final finish of these. I've done a weathering pass on it, but once all the armor is done, I'm going to do a black weathering pass over everything just to tie it all together and to give a bit more of a age feel to the armor. So here you can get a better idea of how those pieces are put together. This was printed in two halves. You can see, 3D printed, welded in the middle with a soldering iron. And then this whole thing has been sanded. I use UV resin now. UV resin, I get on with a lot. It does a really good job in smoothing stuff out. Here you can see I've done one coat of the white. You know, you don't want to go for full coverage in one go, but that's where this one's at. There are four pieces that make up the middle section of this costume. That's two on each side, and they're going to be held together by the belt. The belt I'll be using is just a cheap one. Uh, the one, you can find these all over the internet. They're about 20, 30 pounds, whatever they are. And uh, they're just kind of generic Jedi belts, not leather. This one's going to be mounted to these armor sections, so I'll just be able to clip on this whole middle section by doing up the belt with the Velcro, so that'll be really nice. Uh, nice ease of use there. The way I'll actually be using this belt is backwards, so I'll be using the Velcro at the front, and uh, the front detail will just be at the back as an extra detail, I don't really mind that. But this big section of Velcro at the front we're going to be covering with a buckle, like so. I handmade this buckle, this is just made of... Uh, PVC, so like Sintra is another name, and then some styrene just glued to it. You can see just different levels. I just uh, drew it out and stuck them together, used the heat gun, gave it a bit of a curve. I actually finished this by covering it in UV resin and then sanding, priming, painting, and then that is just a, a metallic wax like rub and buff over the top in a silver. That's got just one final little weathering pass to do but otherwise that is done and we're just going to mount this on the front to cover up the velcro and that should be pretty accurate and look great now these are the forearm pieces um, i decided to go with a solid 
forearm piece. So these are actually 3D printed too. Um, as you can see, it doesn't look like a 3D print. They are in fact covered in leather. The same leather I did for the hood of this guy is gonna be throughout the costume to just to try and tie the bits together. Um, but yeah, this is probably the piece I modified the most from what the 3D print was. It was much bigger and um, harder to get on. I couldn't get, you can't get it on without modifying. Like you have gotta be able to get your hand through anything for your forearm unless it closes. Because this is solid, I had to adjust the opening here so that my, my thumb and hand can actually get through here like that. But yeah. I also cut out this section so that when I bend my arm, there's actually some movement in it. Um, it's a bit restricting, but otherwise, I think it looks pretty cool. Like I said, I covered it in leather. There's a little strip here which covers the seam, just an extra detail. It's kind of been weathered in a bit with paint, so it looks a bit dirty and worn. One of the coolest parts is actually these straps. So these straps are fake, they don't do anything obviously, um, but they are actually embedded down in a recess, so everything's kind of flush. And I did go around, if you can see there, ooh, let's see. I actually went around and sewed, <laughs> quite painstakingly, a stitch around the perimeter of all of these. So there was four to do in general. Um, and then these were just glued in and then I weathered behind it with paint and a bit of powders just to give it a bit of extra tone. But um, yeah, I think these are great. With this costume, I will be covered head to toe and I will be wearing gloves and there's a hand plate as well. Do I have those? Yeah, hand plates can walk about, but um, yeah, there will be hand plates and gloves. Um, so I will be sealed in, but yeah, these look great. Now, one of the first things I actually did for this costume was commission the shirt. The shirt is quite unique. When you see um, what it looks like in the show, it's kind of like a robe, but it's kind of, you know, a bit nondescript. Um, this one has been made to look like a robe. So uh, a very talented seamstress, I think she was in Italy actually did this, but we went with a crinkled cotton, uh, like the Jedi robes from the movies. I don't know if you can see that, let's see. Yeah, so it's a crinkled cotton, so I wanted like an accurate fabric. The whole idea of this costume was to make a realistic version of the character as if it, you could just see it walking about in the movies. Um, yeah, because obviously it was just an animated character. Um, so yeah, this was one of the first things I commissioned and this fits me very nicely. The only thing I'm not too keen on is the color. It's come as qu quite a blue gray and a lot of the costume pieces are a lot warmer. Um, and the whole armor itself has got like a warm tone. So I am actually gonna try and dye this. I'm gonna try and give it a very light, uh, like beige brown dye, just to take the coolness away. Um, we're gonna see how that goes. I've never dyed fabric before, but this fabric should take it. It's a uh, cotton, like I said, it's a uh, crinkle cotton. So it should take a dye pretty well. But yeah, this one was a pretty easy piece. It's got like a little collar on here that again, looks like there's a robe crossed over and this one just zips up the back um, and the collar hooks closed. So it's quite simple put on. So yeah, the only thing to do to this is to try and change the color and then that'll be done. Now for the other parts of the costume, I'm just gonna be wearing off the peg stuff. The trousers will just be gray combat. The color of them should match the, the forearm pieces quite well. And then they're gonna taper in at the leg so I can wear a cover over the bottom. So that'll be nice. The boots themselves are some gray suede ones just from ASOS. They look great as well. Tie right in, again, with that leather finish, matches it quite pretty, pretty closely. I'm not too worried about the lower half. There's not a lot of focus on the lower half. A lot of it is on this upper chest section and then that all that detail in the armor on the middle section. So that's what we're gonna be kind of focusing the efforts on. But yeah, the trousers and boots won't let it down by any means, but they just don't need to be anything too specific. Only things left to do, I've got to make a fake lightsaber clip for the belt. That is just like a little brass looking thing. It's like kind of gold plated brassy looking uh, triangle shape with a slot for a cover tech. Uh, that's pretty easy. I'm gonna do the same method I use for the belt buckle, make it out of styrene and um, PVC. Should look legit. But other than that, just finishing the painting overall, the main painting for the middle armor section and then the general overall weathering. But other than that, yeah, let's get cracking.
And with that final paint job, the costume was done. It was time to go to the top. So there we go guys, that's how I finished my Jedi Temple Guard costume. I am now post Comic-Con. It was a great con, I had a great time. It was great seeing everyone. It was great to debut the costume. It, it went great, it wore very well. Um, I didn't get too hot or anything. I would be wearing it now to show you guys, but it is very, very hot outside and I need help getting it on so I can't put it on right now. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I've got some great photos there, and I'd love to get some more photos of it in the future. Um, yeah, it photographs really well. I love how it looks. I loved uh, getting back to editing photographs of myself again. That was also very fun. I hope you guys enjoyed joining me on the final part of this build. It was a very challenging build to get done in time. I was really pushing myself, um, making myself work on it as well, just to hit that deadline. Um, it, it's a good feeling, but it's also very intense. I'm just going to have a little pause on the costumes. Um, but yeah, we'll be back to prop and costume making real soon. The other thing I didn't get to do on this was to make the um, boot covers. Um, in the end, I decided they weren't necessary. And like I said, the time was quite tight. So um, I didn't want to sort of rush and do that. It's something I may do in the future, but honestly, the costume doesn't really need it. Um, but there's always room for improvement. I will, of course, see you guys in the next video, which hopefully won't be too long from now. And as always, until then, take care. Bye-bye.